You are now listening to the Outsider Sports Show right here on The Hog, the most comprehensive and hard hitting sports hour on radio today. And now, coming at you with their unabashed sports magnetism, here are your hosts, Clint Schweitzer and Noah Groniger. And the Outsider Sports Show is live from Bad Street, Atlanta, GA, for the SEC Championship. We are live at Georgia World Congress Center for SEC Fanfare, taking in all the great stuff. Clint Schweitzer and Noah Groniger joining you. We are at the SEC Championship. This is it. The weekend is here, Noah, and we are live. That's right. Auburn, Missouri. Who's going to take it down? And can Michigan State beat Ohio State so one of these great teams can make it to the national title game? Let's hope so, because the SEC champion, no matter what the circumstance, always deserves to be in the BCS championship. I don't care what the circumstances are, and let's hope that that happens. I'll tell you what, huge contingency of Auburn fans here, very large contingency of Mizzou fans here. This is all... All gravy, man. This is the sports fans' dream, and we're here in Atlanta taking in all the stuff here at SEC Fanfare, all the interactive stuff going on behind us, all the fans. I think uh, I think I just I, I think I just saw uh, Bo Jackson over here, the former Auburn running back. He's signing autographs. It's just a great day to be here, Noah. We could not be more excited to be bringing you the action. Oh, definitely. And you know, uh, one of our guests coming up, Jarris McIntyre, has got to be around here somewhere. We, we're definitely going to have to catch up with him. Yeah, Jarris McIntyre coming up to talk uh, from the Auburn side of things, the former Auburn Tigers receiver. And from the Missouri side of things, the former Tiger, Tony Temple, going to be coming on to talk from the Mizzou perspective on this game. So we're going to have both perspectives. We're playing it fair. Fair right and balanced, baby. I don't have any black and gold with me. Well, okay, maybe I do. Maybe I do have some black and gold. Going to be, of course, I'll tell you what. No, I will I'll tell you right now. Inside the Georgia Dome on Saturday night, I will be cheering for the Tigers. Which one? I've got to know. Just they're both Tigers. Which one? Auburn Tigers, Missouri Tigers. What tiger are you cheering for? Well, you know what? I think we I think we know the answer to that. But I'll tell you what, I respect this Auburn program so much. They were 0 8 in the league last year. They have they have slayed the giant of Alabama. Uh, as Kurt Russell said in Miracle, not this game, not tonight. And Auburn took down Alabama last Saturday at the Iron Bowl and an unbelievable finish. We're going to talk to Jairus about that, but wow, have you ever seen anything like that in your life? No, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe uh, the call that Nick Saban made. I thought, why take the ball out of A.J. McCarron's hands? Uh, a Heisman candidate up until that point, and uh, he takes the ball out of his hands, gives it to a kicker that's kicked like three career kicks, and uh, goes for a 57-yarder, and I just could not believe that he went for that field goal. I agree with you. I think it was a terrible decision. I think if it was any other coach than Nick Saban, that he would be just being crucified through the media this week, but Nick Saban has taken some flack for this. You know, why you try that 57-yard field goal, the chances of it being made are not very good. Uh, chances of it being blocked, I don't know. The chances of it being blocked and the chances of it being returned for a touchdown are maybe about the same. I mean, this uh, it was an unbelievable situation. Uh, Auburn has thrived on this all year. We saw the miracle on the plains against Georgia a couple weeks back, and now this. And they're going to meet a Missouri team in its first SEC championship game. They win the SEC East by taking down Johnny Football 28-21, holding Johnny Manziel to his lowest uh, total yards output in his career. Missouri, who has not allowed more than 28 points in a game this season. How in the world is this game going to play out? Missouri does very well against the run. Auburn's a running team. Missouri's very balanced. I don't know. My head's just jumbled. Getting a lot of uh, influence from fans behind us. I can't. I just I can't make anything of this yet. Well, Texas A&M, uh, they didn't run the ball a lot, but when they did, they got big chunks out of it, and maybe that was because Missouri was playing uh, careful and watching Johnny Manziel, making sure, watching the pass, watching the deep plays that Johnny Manziel uh, loves to create, so maybe that's why. But if they give up that kind of yardage against Auburn and the high yardage per carry, that's going to be a huge problem because Auburn runs the ball a lot, almost every freaking play. I mean, you've got to watch out Trey Mason, Nick Marshall, and uh, that read option and who's got the ball and – What's going to happen? Well, I'll tell you what. Here, what I like about Missouri in this game is that Missouri's uh, one of the is to me maybe aside from Alabama, uh, the most balanced team in the SEC. A team that is second in the uh, SEC in rushing, right behind Auburn, but also a team that can throw the ball around the yard with uh, James Franklin or Matty Mock, and these this plethora of receivers from Doriel Green Beckham, with Damian Washington, Bud Sasser, Jimmy Hunt. Uh, and Marcus Lucas, these guys have been getting it done all season in, in Missouri. A very balanced team. Uh, Auburn is, is very susceptible in the secondary. That's going to be one thing to watch. And I think, like you said, Auburn's going to be able to do some damage on the ground. I think this is a very even matchup. I've looked at all the numbers. It's very even. Yards per game, very even. Points per game, very even. Points against, very even. Missouri hasn't, like I said, given up more than 28 in a game. 
I, I, I just think this is going to be a very special occasion for the Missouri Tiger fans that are down here. They know that this, you know, you never know when you're going to see this again as a Missouri fan. These guys, I mean, this is this being playing on this stage is such an important thing for this program. Uh, Missouri is going to make a lot of headway in recruiting just for being in this game. Yeah, exactly. And if they can win the game, it's just going to mean that much more. And I think they're going to have to get up by at least 14 points in this yeah. game near the end because if you make it a close game, we've seen the last two Auburn games, the Georgia Miracle Hail Mary catch that uh, Auburn beats Georgia on and then against Alabama in the Iron Bowl. The missed field goal run all the way back, 109 yards. I mean, you have got to put this team out of its misery. Otherwise, you could see a miracle out of uh, Gus Malzahn and those Auburn Tigers. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'm sitting in the front row in Section 132 if anyone wants to come say hi during the game. And I'm going to be sitting there from my seat. If Missouri has a 14-point lead with a minute to go and the ball, I'm not going to feel comfortable because I will feel like even a kneel down from James Franklin could yield some sort of bobble and an interception for a touchdown. I don't know what's left for Auburn to accomplish miraculously, but I'm sure there is something. And really what I think it comes down to is just two good teams playing each other that no one thought would be here. Missouri was 2-6 and six in the league and 5-7 and seven a year ago. Auburn was 0-8, oh just a pitiful bunch from the Auburn Tigers. And here the, these two Tigers are meeting each other now. Total turnarounds. The rest of the league has to be looking at itself and wondering how in the world this happened. Yeah, I know. And uh, Auburn, I mean, hopefully their magic has run its course. Hopefully this is as, mag as much magic as they have in the had in the tank uh, to get them to the SEC title game. But it runs out, and Missouri does what they can do. Like you said, they're a completely balanced football team, a great defense. Hopefully they can control this game and win outright without uh, having to watch if Auburn can make another magical play. Oh, my goodness. I'm already thinking about it, and I know a lot of these fans are thinking about it here, guys. It's a, it's a wonderful atmosphere here at the SEC Fan Fair. Cannot believe I'm actually here. I never thought, you know, if you'd have told me five years ago, someday you'll be watching uh, the Missouri Tigers play in an SEC championship game at the Georgia Dome. I don't know what, I, what I've told you, but it would not have been nice, and there would have been expletives because <laughs> there's no way this is happening. It still feels like a dream. Uh, coming down here is, is just a wonderful experience and cannot believe that it's happening. And, 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 and really the question remains, a lot of, there's been a lot of talk this week, does the winner of Missouri and Auburn deserve to play for that national championship game? I mean, obviously Ohio State playing in the Big Ten is just, a, it's just not a good league, but Ohio State, they're undefeated. What, what, I mean, who has the best loss? Missouri lost to, to uh, you know, a team in the top ten. Uh, in South Carolina, and Auburn has lost a, a ranked LSU team, but Ohio State has no losses. You can't take that away from them. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of two different questions. What's gonna, what is gonna happen if Ohio State wins, and what should happen? Right. Um, I think what should happen is definitely whoever wins the SEC title should go to the national title game, leap Ohio State. But uh, unfortunately, it looks like it's going to take an Ohio State loss for that to happen. But uh, what is going to happen, Ohio State, if they beat Michigan State? Uh, they're up in the polls. Uh, the voters are going to vote them in because they vote. They like the uh, no losses instead of the, looking at an SEC team and saying they're a superior conference, so even a one-loss team should get ahead. So uh, the voters uh, are probably going to vote Ohio State in if they win, and it'll be Florida State, Ohio State, unfortunately. So go Sparty. Are you telling me there's no chance Duke beats Florida State for the ACC championship game? Because, man, they play football down at Duke too, buddy. There is one chance. If the charges on James, James Winston uh, come in, then uh, and he's not eligible to play in that game, then Duke has a slight chance. I just but, called uh, in a favor, by the way. Yes, uh, we have called the sheriff down there. <laughs> <laughs> Things are starting to roll, so uh, Jameis, well, watched out. I tell you what, our SEC championship game coverage is just getting started after the break. Come back and join us because Tony Temple, the former Missouri running back, is going to be joining us talking about Missouri and what, they're, what they need to do to win this game and how this relates to Tony Temple's team of 2007, which played for a Big 12 championship and were a win away from the BCS championship game. So we'll get his thoughts on that. Come on back here on the Hog, and we'll be right back after break with Tony Temple. And welcome back to the Outsider Sports Show right here on the Hog, KKESFM, and we are talking SEC Championship, and we are talking Mizzou football with none other than former Missouri Tiger Tony Temple. Tony, welcome to the show. What an opportunity for this Missouri team. SEC Championship. Who would have ever thought it, man? What's up, guys? Uh, thanks for having me on again. Um, I tell you, isn't it a great time to be a Tiger? And I, I, honestly, I felt so confident uh, after the South Carolina that we would bounce back and stay strong. I'm just so excited for this Saturday. And, uh, you know, and I've seen so many parallels between uh, this team and the 2007 team. Of course, you guys ran into an obstacle uh, in the regular season in 2007 against Oklahoma, lost that game. 
Uh, and, and, and my theory on on this loss to South Carolina this year was that this may refocus the Tigers. Did that did that loss in 2007 get you guys refocused and uh, help keep you guys' eyes on the prize, knowing you had to win out? Well, that, that that's that's amazing that you, you bring that point up because that's literally what a couple of guys we were talking about. It's probably one of the best things that can happen um, to a team to again, like you said, to refocus you as you, you move forward throughout the season. Um, as you know, a lot of tension happens when you, you break that top ten, that top five mark, and you know things change around campus, things change around practice, it changes at media day, and so having your focus to know that you can't be beat on any given Saturday if you don't finish the game. Um, it was probably a great thing for the Tigers moving forward. And, again, I think Coach Pico and the coaches have done an amazing job this year um, keeping these guys grounded and keeping their goal on getting to where they're going this Saturday. This this does seem like uh, such a concerted team effort. I mean, you've seen so many players step up this year. Michael Sam, Andrew Wilson on defense, so many guys. Uh, of course, E.J. Gaines. Uh, and I want to go back into in, in 2007. You guys make it to the Big 12 championship. Similar stage as to what we're going to see here. Uh, in Atlanta, and uh, you guys had just played such a big game against Kansas. It was such an emotional ball game. Uh, was was there a bit of a letdown for you guys uh, the next week, knowing that you were number one, uh, had to win to get to the BCS championship game, and was uh, what was that like uh, coming off playing Kansas? You know, looking back at it, um, you know, you you, you want to say that you know we were we were focused, we were ready to go, but that 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 emotion, that emotion that comes out of it, uh, out of the game, that's so intense with your rival, does take a lot out of you. Um, but just by in fairness, it's something that I, I, I we were two, we're two different teams. That old seven team and this team this year is two different teams, and uh, the potential of this team, I think, we're they're getting better each game, each every. every week I don't think we've seen the full potential of this team and so that's what I think is so exciting um, about this year's team this wide receiver core that we have um, Franklin is I feel like he's just he's really still coming into his own just getting off the of injury um, these are two different teams so I think we match up really well against Auburn and um, this could be this could be a, a pretty uh, easy game for the Tigers if they come to play uh, talking about that, uh, how worried are Missouri fans going to be if uh, Missouri's got this game close, it's not a blowout, or they're up 14 uh, for some more Auburn shenanigans at the end? <laughs> Auburn, they've been, they've been absolutely amazing uh, coming in uh, and in the game coming together. Um, I think, you know, I think these Tiger fans have been kind of spoiled with this team. They they come, they play all four quarters, and I think that that's one thing that we have going into this this weekend is this team that, that they know in order to win the game, especially with their their history of Auburn, these mir- game miracles, they're going to have to play all four quarters to get this win. I want to ask you about Henry Josie because uh, we did our Mizzou football preview with you uh, in August, and uh, you talked about Henry Josie. You talked, you said that you really believed in him believed uh, in his work ethic that he could get back to where he was and what happened Tony is that uh, Mr. Josie has come back so strong and had such a wonderful season in fact he puts the nail in the coffin against uh, Texas A&M to send Missouri to the SEC East Championship or to the SEC Championship game talk about uh, Henry and and how you knew that uh, he was going to be able to have such a special season and come back from such a terrible injury man Henry first and foremost is, is, and I'm sure all of it the coaches the players is his friends they would tell you the same thing he's such a great person um, he's very genuine he, he, he's real and I think he puts that passion um, in, into his craft what he does right now with football and being uh, a starting running back for the University uh, of Missouri he, he works so hard at being the best and you see that um, you see that with his demeanor and so I, I can't tell you how excited I am for him um, to see him succeed um, in an offense like this, which, you know, bottom line, it is geared for, you know, wide receivers and, and it really um, uh, for the quarterback to see him succeed the way he is and to always show up in big games after what he's been through. Um, I know we adore him as fans, former players. I know his teammates do as well. Um, it couldn't happen to a better guy. So uh, I wish him the best of luck. I think um, his play coming out strong has been a key difference this year, uh, which I think everybody can agree with that too um and you know i hope i hope we can get them back again well and i want to ask you too about coach pinkle because we uh asked you the question during our mizzou football preview earlier in the year uh should carrie pinkle be on the hot seat and you said emphatically no and here he puts together this season the one of the most special seasons definitely the most special one since 2007 uh 11 and 1 sec east champs just talk about 
you know, what your emotions are for Coach Pinkle and how he's been able to overcome, you know, some, some personal trouble and a team that looked like we could be spiraling out of control to have this great season. Man, Coach Kerry Pinkle has done a great job this year. Um, I saw a recent interview that he was in. And, um, basic, bottom line, he, he mentioned that it's time for, you know, Mizzou to start having respect and just to be respected. And um, I think he, he, no matter what, where he's at and what he does, he kind of demands that respect from his team, from his coaches. And I think it's time for us to start giving them that respect nationally and, and people recognizing um, what he has done. You know, I've heard a lot of, you know, chatter with Coach of the Year with the Auburn coach, but, I mean, we came from the same uh, the same issues. And obviously with the adversity that he's went through, too, as well, to bounce back to take a team to potentially play in the national championship, that says a lot about his character um, for him to continue to move forward. So um, I'm glad. I think, again, uh, Mike Alden made a great job keeping Coach Pinkle. And, you know, hopefully we can continue to get in his career here, too, as, as a Tiger. Uh, Missouri gave up some big big chunks in the running game against Texas A&M. Uh, what's their game plan? Uh, how do you guys feel about going up against Trey Mason and Nick Marshall? Um, you know what? The only concern, I, you know, I really feel as a fan um, is, you know, they're fast. They're, they're a fast offense. They really like to rush um, and get the defenses out of out of uh, out of alignment um, as we move forward, but I think we're we're in a whole different situation. I think these players and these individuals on the defensive side and off the side know what's on the line now. And in '07, it was kind of a, a huge shock that wow, we could be playing for the national championship, getting through this game. Well, they have the same scenario, and having that same scenario where all they have to do is just take care of a business on Saturday and let things unfold. This could be a great opportunity for them. So I don't think I, I think we'll see the best out of each and every one of those defense alignment, which are going to control the game, uh, the line of scrimmage. And I think we have a, I think we have a, a big chance um, uh, to have an advantage on that side. One thing I think that's been such a such a cool thing this year is the. the for Mizzou football home games, the, the intro video featuring all the former players, some of the greats, uh, yourself, Martin Rucker, Chase Daniel, Jeremy Macklin, guys like that. What does it mean to you to? I'm sure you've been to. I'm sure you've been to Columbia, seen the video, seen uh, the the spot where you know your your Cotton Bowl record mentioned during the video. How much did that pump you up and just make you so proud to be uh, an, an alumnus of the University of Missouri? Right, absolutely. And you, it's right there. You just feel so proud just to be a Tiger, to say that, um, to wear the colors, to wear um, uh, anything the Zoo Tigers, and to know what, what everybody continues to wear, contribute to brought to that success. Uh, the people that are still in the NFL, the former alumni, um, it, 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 it's, it's so powerful to watch that and know that even just me, I've had just a little piece of that carving in. Um, it's it's a it's could become a rich tradition um, as we continue to move forward now, especially playing in the SEC, playing with all this wonderful talent. Um, I think obviously it's going to help recruiting too as well, and them being able to see how we do take care of our alumni and the people that go on and have success. Um, I think all around it, it's just it's awesome. Like I said, it's a great time to be a Tiger right now. Well, Tony, from a from a player that's been on this grand stage, been in a been in a Big Twelve championship game with a chance to get into into the BCS into the BCS championship game in your guys's case uh, these players are facing a similar challenge uh, in Atlanta on a, on a huge stage for the SEC championship if you were to talk to, uh, to talk to some of the players what kind of advice what, what would you tell them being from a person that's been in this position before what kind of advice would you give Honestly, um, I think the biggest thing, you, you go back to something as simple as uh, summer ball and, and just finish it and focus and refocusing on your goals and flushing everything, everything that you've done prior um, to now, um, anything that could potentially be in the future, just flush that and just focus on one play at a time. If they can execute one play at a time and flush everything as they move forward, um, it, it's no way in the world that they can't come out and win. Mizzou plays their best game and, the, and they play um, how they know they can play, they can't lose against Auburn. So um, I'm excited for this Saturday, and um, I, I think this is, like I said, I think this is a great time to be a Tiger. Hey, you're absolutely right, Tony, and we appreciate it every time you join us here on the Outsider Sports Show. Before we let you go, got to get a prediction, got to get a score prediction, and we're going to, of course, have to hold it, hold it, uh, hold it against you no matter what. <laughs> All right, I am going 35 to 21. I love it. I love it, man. You're you're the best, Tony. We can't thank you enough. Uh, definitely want to catch up down the road. You're e easily one of our favorite guests, and you're always just such a classy, nice guy, and we uh, we appreciate it, my man. So thank you guys once again, and um, I look forward to catching up with you guys you bet. Again. Let's get us one here, buddy. 
Sounds good. All right. Take care. Take care. Big thanks to Tony Temple for joining us. He's got Missouri 35-21. That's, that's, uh, that's an ambitious score. I mean, Missouri has not given up more than 28 points. I could see maybe holding to that. But uh, Missouri's offense has been more running oriented since James Franklin has come back. A more ball control a little bit. I mean, uh, Missouri only scored 28 against Texas A&M. Not such a good defense for the Aggies. But uh, so, you know, I don't know. I, I can't really tell where my head's going with this right now as far as the score-wise. But I'll take that from, from Tony and – it's, it's going to be a big. It's going to be a good one. This is going to be a very entertaining football game. I can tell you that. Oh, definitely. And I think that's the kind of score that Missouri needs to see on the board, so uh, they can stay away from the close games, like we mentioned, and uh, just take control of this game and uh, just have it in hand at the end. So I you're not questioning anything. Absolutely. And I do see a lot of parallels between uh, this situation and, and Missouri playing Oklahoma in 2007 in the in the uh, Big 12 championship game. There, uh, Missouri had just come off an emotional roller coaster ride when they beat their arch rival Kansas to become number one in the nation um, to get the, to the Big 12 North Championship to win that and to get to the Big 12 Championship to, pick, to take on Oklahoma. The next week the magic just wasn't there. Oklahoma proved to be too much. The, the players maybe weren't ready for a stage like that. You just gotta, gotta be hopeful that this Missouri team is ready for this stage. They've seemed up to the challenge all year going on the road to Georgia and winning, going to Vanderbilt and winning who's, who, that's proven to be maybe one of Missouri's better wins is uh, Vanderbilt uh, has had a very quiet, solid season yet again. Uh, Georgia kind of stumbled with uh, with their injuries, but I don't know. I think Missouri is going to have to do. They're going to have to play a, an A game to win this game. They really are. It's going to have to be an, uh, a Missouri A game because Auburn has proven through the course of the season that they're going to bring theirs every week out there. They did unseat Alabama. That cannot be forgotten. But you wonder about these college kids, if they're kind of riding too high right now and looking back at that Iron Bowl and just can't believe what they did and how they did it. And then going back and looking at the Georgia game and what they did and how they did it. Uh, and you wonder if they're just riding too high and maybe coming into the game not as focused and uh, maybe just kind of banking on that something magical is going to happen. So uh, they're, they won't be too worried if they get down a lot. Like, oh, well, something magical is going to happen. It happened the last two games we played. So you kind of wonder about their uh, mentality and uh, their mental strength uh, going into this game. You can question that, and I agree with you about that, because, and that goes for, you know, for both teams. It, you, know, you spend so much energy getting through a season, and now you're in this championship game, and the stakes have never been higher, and the, the lights are on, the money's down. There's some, you know, famous person singing the national anthem. Uh, there's some concert at halftime where people are all over the field with sign. I mean, it's going to be a big time feeling, almost like a Super Bowl type feeling uh, here. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be which team responds, which team's ready to roll. Both these coaches, either one of them could be national coach of the year, and I would agree with it. Uh, I think both of them are deserving. I'd say make it a co co coach of the year. I would be absolutely okay with that. But I'll tell you what, we're going to be talking more SEC championship after the break. The Auburn side of things coming up with Jairus McIntyre. We're here at SEC Fanfare. The Outsiders Sports Show is here, man. We couldn't be more excited. We'll be right back here on The Hog. And welcome back to The Hog, KKESFM, here on The Outsiders Sports Show. Clint Schweitzer and Noah Groninger being joined currently by Jairus McIntyre, the former Auburn Tiger, War Eagle, and welcome to the show, Jairus. It's time, my man. Man, War Eagle, man, War, War, and Eagle. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still excited. I've been talking about Auburn for the last, what, three, four days. I'll probably still talk about it regardless of what happens for the next two, three, four, five years because <laughs> never seen an ending like that. Um, I mean, you know, Auburn's already programming that a lot of people know of, but with the exposure and with that play, um, ending the game the way it did against Alabama, I mean, yeah, I'm still excited, man. I can't even, I can't even lie. I've been talking about this one for a long time. Well, this is unbelievable. I mean, have you ever seen anything like this? I mean, not just the Ele the Iron Bowl finish, which was absolutely insane, but talking about the Georgia finish as well. I mean, this is a team that has won these two games in absolute, unbelievable, heart, you know, gut wrenching fashion. I mean, you, you, I mean, have you come off this high yet? This has to be just unbelievable for Auburn nah. Nation. Nah, it's unbelievable. I mean, I mean, to, to see the way those games ended, those two games, um, it, it's just unbelievable. I mean, even the George game. I've never. I mean, I've seen Hill Marys and I've seen the different plays, and I've seen Doug Flutie and some of the plays. But, but for the ball to be tipped the way it was, and the angle that the receiver caught it in that George game, I've never seen anything like that. And then for a couple weeks later, um, again, the number one team in the country. I'm playing for the SEC West Championship to be able to run a ball back 109 yards, which rarely happens anyway. I've never seen it in the game like that. So, so it, it's really one of the best, if not the best, ending of a football game in the history of football, not just college. Because you know, I, I did my research and I still can't find. 
was more than, you know, 99 yards. And I, I'm trying to, I'm still looking, but I haven't seen it. So, um, in the fashion that it was won, uh, with the, in the magnitude of what it was, and, and it being the Iron Bowl, all the first Alabama, you know, one first number four, and, and, and the implications it had to make you lose the national title. Um, I haven't seen anything like it. Like I said, I'm still excited about it. And as well as that Georgia game, man, because, you know, the, the Auburn people know in, in November, you play Georgia and Bama back to back for the most part. And it, it's always, you know, that, that tough stretch in November to kind of tell and dictate where you, you know, where you are as a team and if you're going to be playing for the SEC championship. And to, to beat Georgia and Alabama at home with, with you know, Miracle plays, whatever you want to call it, last second plays, Hail Mary, you know, luck, whatever you want to call it, at the end of the day, it's a W. So, um, you know, I, I, can't, I can't stand up about it. Well, can you, I mean, at the time that this happened, could you even believe that Nick Saban had elected to kick a field goal there, a 57 yard field goal? And it's funny to me because it looked like, okay, yeah, they attempted this field goal, but yet once it fell short and once uh, the Auburn, you know, the Auburn player fielded it, it looked like they had no idea what was happening next, that they could actually go tackle the guy. I mean, could you believe that? And if this was any other coach than Nick Saban, would there just be absolute out and outcry for this guy's head? You know what? It's, it's funny because, and I think, I think thinking back at it, it is. But when you're in the in, in the moment of the game, he's a coach, and he's probably you know he's a legendary coach himself. But I don't think you would ever think that the ball is going to go directly into the into that guy's hands, that returner. You know, look, myself, I'm sitting there thinking, man, I hope he doesn't make this field goal because at first I'm thinking it's going to be a hell man. But then I thought about it, and I was like, well, man, if this kid can somehow you know, pull out his behind to where he can make the field goal, I mean, I mean, he'd be, you know, a, a legend at Alabama, you know, drilling a, a 50-some yard field goal and winning the game. And most of the times on the long field goals, um, for the most part, they'll be wide right, wide left, but it, 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 it wasn't, I don't, I, it's just tough. I don't think you would have, you would have ever think it would go directly into that returner's hand. And then him to have, you know, the ability to get the ball and do something with it for 109 yards. I'm thinking if it's 11 guys on the field, even if they are not, it's going to be tough to run, or, you know, run it back 109 yards. So when he did it, I was like, you know what? And I, and I didn't really realize how far it was standing, you know, on the field looking. It was kind of like, okay, you know, this is this is this is a pretty long field goal. But uh, but there's no way in the world that anybody would have ever thought that that the guy would run it back, or Chris Davis would run it back 109 yards. So you know. I, now that I look back at it, I probably would just going to hell Barry, but, you know, what are your chances? I mean, the percentages, I don't know if they're the same as throwing Hail Mary and make it or kick a field goal that far and make it. So, um, it's tough to question Nick Saban, but, but, but I probably would have thrown a hell Mary at, at that particular time. Well, you said you were on the field. Is there any anyone on the sideline that had to hold you back from going out there and help making a block? Oh, man, I almost ran out there and, you know, jumped on him when he got the end zone. I was, I was waiting for <laughs> I was waiting for a couple other people to run out there and uh, and do it first, so I wouldn't be the only one. I'd be on, you know, ESPN like I'm a shrinker or something. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that would have been worth it. There. Yeah, that would have, you know, you know, former Auburn Tiger, Jarris McIntyre, you know, damn, getting getting handcuffed by the police because he ran, he was too excited. But um, no, nah, man, I, it, it just it was just chaos. And once it happened, it, it was so crazy because it took it took a minute to, for everything to like sink in like did he just win the game you know at first I'm looking is there any flags or you know I, I'm to be honest I didn't even know that rule stood in college because I know Ed Reed did it a couple years ago um, when he was at Baltimore and I know Nathan Basher did it at Chicago Devin Hester did it but I can't remember um, a college player doing it so when he caught the ball I'm like is this legal you know what I mean I know you can do it in the NFL and uh, man when I saw that I was just going nuts man the whole the whole damn town, you know, I was going crazy, and, and it was just amazing, man. Really, really is amazing. They're still showing the play. I know they're going to show it forever, and that's a good thing. You know, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger right about now. Well, one thing uh, Missouri and Auburn fans have in common is that they're both huge Michigan State fans right now, as it seems that uh, a Michigan State win over Ohio State is the only way that one of those teams is going to make the, the national title game. Uh, so uh, are you wearing your green? Yeah, man. I'm going to be wearing green and blue. I know Duke is going to be tough for Duke, but uh, you never know. You know what I mean? So, so um, 
I'm rooting for those teams, but at the end of the day, we got to be the Missouri team, who's very, very good. You know, I got a buddy that coaches for Florida, the DB coach for Florida, Jamar Robinson, played with me, played with me at Auburn, and he was telling me, hey, they're not a slouch at all. I mean, they got big receivers, good running backs, a great quarterback, they're well coached, the defense flies around, so nothing to give them, man, and that's why, and, and that's why I say the SEC is the toughest conference, and I argue with guys in the Pac-12, and the Big Ten, and everything else, and I'm just like, you don't understand. One week you're playing Bama, the next week you're playing Missouri. You know, the week before that you're playing Georgia, then you play Texas A&M, you're playing LSU. It's not like, you know, it's not a cupcake schedule. So even if you come out of there with one loss, I mean, I think it's equivalent or even better, you know, beating up on, you know, the Illinois and the Minnesotas and the Northwestern, nothing against those schools. But to me, it doesn't even compare. So, you know, that that's maybe I have a little SEC bias, but... Looking at Missouri, like I said, they're, they're a hell of a team. And, and, you know, both of us are obviously rooting for a loss. And I, and I do believe the winner of this uh, championship should have one of the spots to play probably a Florida State. Well, and I wanted to ask you about Missouri, of course. Uh, we're here in Atlanta. We are so ready for this game, you know, covering Missouri uh, on a daily basis. Humongous Missouri fans, but the utmost respect for the Auburn Tigers. So glad to be able to, to play this game, and especially, and, and what does it mean to you? Because I know from the Missouri side, it is, you know, Missouri came into the league last year, we're 5-7, and 2-6 and six in the league. Everyone said this team can't compete, it's over, forget it. They can't recruit here, they can't compete here. And for Auburn, who was 0-8 last year, and everyone said, well, their time was done. Gene Chizik cheated his way to a national championship. Well, he's horrible here out. Okay, bring in guest smells on, whatever. Both of these schools have found a way to this championship game, and I think it's a, uh, almost a, a destiny-type situation for both teams. And I think I am just excited for a good game, and I think that uh, both schools deserve to be here, and it's just really exciting. No, it definitely is, man. And, and like I said, man, with Missouri, they're, they're, they are a really good. And I, and I was one of the people, just like you just said, I don't know, like, you know, Missouri, and I know they put up points a lot with you when they had, um, I guess, Chase Daniels a couple years ago. Yep. And I was just thinking, like, you know, Missouri puts up points, but that, that's the, you know, the Big 12, and, and I, don't, I don't know, it's, it's different. But but when I saw they got, you know, the kid, Dwar- Dwarf Beckham, and, yeah. and um, some of the other recruits, and they were, the way they were recruiting, and the way their head coach had that energy, and you could put points on the board, and, you know, they put players in the NFL, I was like, you know what, Missouri is a good program. And then they are, you know, they've always had that history of a pretty good program, so I'm like, you know, once they get in here and do what they did in the Big 12 and get everybody accustomed to what's going on and get familiar with the teams and the stadiums, they're not going to be a slouch. They're just going to make the SEC that much better. And um, I didn't think it would happen this quick, but it made me a believer when they start, you know, playing those those real SEC teams and beating them. I was like, well, hey, you know, I mean, just even last week seeing that they kept um, texting them to what, 20, was 28-21. Yeah. I'm like, and, you know, texting them put up 40 on us and 40 against them. So for them to keep Johnny Football to under 20, 28 points, I mean, to me, it's, it's impressive in itself. So that's why I'm not, you know, oh, you know, so fast, Auburn, we're going to national title because we got to beat Missouri. And Missouri is, is a really good football team. So it's going to be a great game. And I'm going to be I'm gonna be right in front of the team checking it out. So, you know, hopefully we can win, but it's going to be a good one. How confident are, are Auburn fans going to be if this is a really close game that uh, their miracle is going to happen again at, late at the end of the game? I call it the mouth on magic. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to be going to be honest because if you think back in 2010, you know some of the games that we've had that we had against LSU, um, against Arkansas, I mean, the national title, um, you know bringing Cam Newton in from nowhere in one year and winning the Heisman and, and, and the SEC championship and the national championship, and then a year from going 0 and 8 in the SEC to you know being being you know the top. You know, one, two, three teams in the you know one of the top three teams in the country. Um, so winning two games the way we did the end of the year. I mean, if you think about it, in, in the last couple of time, you know years that Malzahn has been on that sideline, it's just like magic. So you know, if, if this is a close game, like he said last week before Ben, if this is a close game, you know, I, 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 I'll pick my team to win. So if it's a close game, <laughs> we'll see in those last two games. I promise you, nobody will ever jump on the TV when you're watching all the Tigers if if it's a close game. So. Absolutely, and I'll tell you what, well, before we let you go, Jairus, we've got to get your score prediction. We had former Tiger Tony Temple on the show just a little bit ago. Uh, I think he had 35-21 Missouri. I'm assuming you're going to pick Auburn, but uh, let's get a score. I'm going to pick Auburn. I'm going to pick Auburn. I'm going to say 35-21. There you go. I like that. I like hey, that. I was, 
yeah, and I'm going to give you a little, you know, a little bit behind it. I, I would say, you know, Missouri's going to come in, they're going to throw the ball a little bit, they're going to throw the ball around to the big receivers, um, and, and put some points on the board early. I think we'll figure it out in the second half. But I just think the rush game of Nick Marshall and Trey Mason is it, just so tough to defend, not knowing who has that ball. I think we'll be able to uh, continue to run the ball and put up, you know, 35 points to their 21. Absolutely. Sounds great, man. Well, here's, here's to a great game. Here's to a great SEC championship. So great to have you on again, Jairus. We appreciate it. Enjoy the game and good luck, buddy. War Eagle. Thank you, man. War Eagle. War Eagle. <laughs> Go Tigers. <laughs> Bye. We both Tigers. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks a lot, Jairus. We appreciate it. Okay, man. Thank you. Thanks a lot to Jairus. And he's got 35-21 Auburn. He's going against the grain from Tony Temple. Maybe we should start a Twitter war between the two. I mean, I'm sure we could hook that oh, up. Oh, yes. We, def we definitely got the uh, hookups to do that. I'll tell you what. When we come back, we're going to be talking some NFL and a little USC coaching hire. The former Chief Larry Parker is going to be joining us talking all things Chiefs. And uh, Steve Sarkeesian being hired at USC. A uh, big hire for them. I, I think it's going to be a, a very, a very good fit. Steve. I mean, that's been his dream job this whole time. This is going to be great. So we'll be talking to Larry Parker when we come back right here on The Hog. We're still live at SEC Fan. All right. Welcome back to the Outsider Sports Show. We're here with former USC Trojan, former Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Larry Parker. Larry, how are things going for you? I'm good. How you doing? Oh, can't complain. Can't complain. Uh, let's get into this uh, USC hire. They hire Steve Sarkeesian from Washington, Ed Orgeron. Uh, they let him uh, walk out the door. They tried to keep him, but uh, he wants to go try and be a head coach somewhere else. What do you think about this new hire of Steve Sarkeesian? I don't know what my first reaction. I was a little, I was a little worried. I was, uh, I didn't think it was that good of a decision. But as I kind of sat back and thought about it, um, I think Steve, with, with Steve was, um, with Steve, with Pete Carroll. Um, and, you know, a couple years ago, I think he did a, he did a really good job. Um, I, my first thought was that I thought USC should have uh, hired a bigger persona type head coach. But when I thought about it, there, there wasn't really anyone out there that kind of fit the bill. So the, the choice of Steve, it, it's, a, it's a pretty good decision. I'm, I mean, I wish him the best of luck. I hope he came out of right this ship for us. Yeah, I wanted to get your thoughts on Keyshawn Johnson. Uh, he doesn't sound uh, too happy with the hire. He thinks uh, Steve Sarkeesian and Lane Kiffin are good buddies. Uh, Steve may have a better personality, but he thinks the coaching philosophies are pretty similar. So I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Um, I, think it, I think your first reaction is it's kind of easy to say that, but I think knowing the two guys, I mean, two completely different personalities, um, I think um, Steve uh, is a little bit more aggressive in his offensive approach to the game of football. And honestly, I, I'm, I'm going to give the guy a go. I, I think he'll be okay. I, I, actually, I need to, I, I'm having faith that he'll be okay because <laughs> he's all we got right now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, before we get into this uh, Kansas City-Washington uh, game this Sunday, I want to get your thoughts on uh, this Kansas City Chiefs team in 2013 and uh, specifically their uh, three-game slide lately. Man, it, it's, it's been awesome watching the Chiefs. Um, have the success that they've had this year. Um, it's very surprising, especially um, how they how they played last year. I mean, they're, they're just kind of going against all the odds this year and just playing just kind of balls out football. Um, I think what happens is it's tough to continually win in the NFL. I think they just kind of it's late in the season. Um, teams kind of have figured out what how, where the Kansas City Chiefs have been having success. They're kind of just kind of they're, they're, they're matching some of their intentions um, that the Chiefs have been playing with. Um, early in the season, but you know the three-game slide—it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, the team is still actually playing well again in all the games that they've lost. Uh, I think they'll be okay in the long run. Well, what do you think about this quarterback, Alex Smith? Uh, we here at the Outsiders have uh, been pleading and uh, wanting a franchise quarterback, uh, still struggling to find one after all the years of Bono and Gerbach and Castle. Alex Smith uh, comes in. Uh, he's had two good games lately, but uh, we're not sure he can be consistent enough and uh, be that franchise quarterback for this team. I don't know. My, I, I, I think Alex is a good guy. I, I don't think he's ever going to be a winning uh, quarterback or consistently winning quarterback. Like I said, he's had some success with the Chiefs. Um, I think it's about time they, 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 they took a leap of faith and, and went out and, and got that big-time uh, franchise type player and uh, helped the team, you know, start continuing uh, getting into the game this uh, Sunday, uh, Kansas City uh, goes to Washington, uh, taking on a hapless Redskins team. RG3 is having trouble. Uh, they're running the ball all right with Alfred Morris, but uh, the passing game isn't clicking. 
and uh, the defense uh, seems to have lost a step. You've got older players on that side with uh, London Fletcher and D'Angelo Hall. So uh, what do you see out of this game come Sunday? Um, I think this will be a rebound game for the Chiefs. I think they'll look at the film and see where they made some mistakes in these uh, last three losses. And I think they will kind of give it to the Redskins this weekend and uh, uh, let the NFL know that they're for real and uh, they're not they want just some flukes for the early part of the season. I think they're really going to um, have, have a lot of success in this game. Uh, what do you think about this defense lately? Uh, early on in the season, they were blowing the doors off people, and now uh, Justin Houston's out for a couple weeks, uh, Tom Bahali's injured, and this secondary has really struggled as of late with Marcus Cooper, Brandon Flowers. They've had some trouble uh, guarding these receivers. They've been playing, they were playing lights out early in the season. And I think you can win a lot of games in the NFL with your defense with just heart. And, and it seems like they have huge heart, and, and they've just been playing, they've been playing great. They gave up um, the last three games. Um, it, it was very close, but um, I don't think the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs won't have any issues um, with the Redskins. And they'll, they'll they'll keep back on track and they'll be okay. Uh, what do you see for this team uh, going on uh, into the playoffs? Uh, looks like they could be playing the Indianapolis Colts or uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, still a lot of football to play, but. Looks like that's how things are going to shake out as a five seed going on the road to one of those teams. Uh, do you think Alex Smith can get it done Can uh, and this team? Uh, it's not just Alex Smith, but uh, these wide receivers can start holding on to the football and uh, this team can get a playoff win, first one since 93. You know what, I would, I would, I would love, to, I would, I would love to, to see the Chiefs um, have some success in those early rounds of the playoff. Um, it's, it's one of those things where it's, these guys have to step up in their plays. I mean, these are NFL guys, and I think everyone that's on that level has the, the ability to make the big play and, and do what needs to be done. But it's just all up to these guys. Do they, do, do some of these offensive players have the heart to step it up and, and, and get it done? And in my team, I mean, I think they do. Um, they, like I said, they have to care at the end of the season. And um, I think if they just kind of come together as a team and, 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 and use those, those first wins as, like, their strengths, what do you have to say about uh, some people out there that said the Chiefs had an easy schedule early on? Uh, they played a lot of backup quarterbacks. Uh, they played a lot of uh, teams that didn't have many wins, if any, and uh, teams that uh, just weren't quite of ilk, uh, like Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos. Um, like, like I said earlier, like to win the NFL with Cardiff, it doesn't matter who you're playing. Did they, did they have a little bit? Was it a little bit easier than some of the other teams in the NFL? Yeah, it was. But it doesn't matter when you pull off those those many uh, wins in a row. That, that's a big time deal in the NFL because all the guys on the NFL level are quality players. Um, the teams might not be playing well as a whole, but um, everybody can play. So any time you can pull off that many wins, it's it says it says um, as far as I'm talking. Now, uh, we were talking the other day uh, so via social media. We were talking about uh, the Chiefs and their uh, franchise quarterback situation, and uh, you made some interesting comments. I wanted to see if you could uh, kind of repeat those and uh, tell us why you think the Chiefs uh, haven't gone after that franchise quarterback or uh, found one. Um, I, well, with my experience, I, I, and, and you know, being a part of organizations, just kind of watching the Chiefs over the years, they seem to kind of you know, the wrong guys. And a lot of times these guys haven't panned out, and then they, they, they've um, allocated so many, so many, so much, so many resources to these players that just haven't worked out. I, I, I don't know; it's been a, been a problem on the administrative side for a while now. I think they just need to break the mold and step out of the box and do something different to help the organization, you know, get back to winning ways. Um, it's, it's, I don't know; it's, it's just it's something that I've kind of seen over the last, you know, 10, 15 years that just made some bad decisions on the administrative side. Hopefully we can we can turn that around and uh, you know get the big time players and um, help this team you know stay at the top of the uh, AFC. Yeah, well, uh, before we let you go, uh, got to get your prediction for Sunday. Uh, you think uh, the Chiefs are going to beat Washington? How much? Uh, how's it going to look out there? I'm feeling 28-17 Chiefs. 28-17 sounds good. Getting back on track, so. Uh, can't thank you enough, Larry, for coming on the show. Uh, huge honor for us to have you on. Former Kansas City Chief, USC Trojan. Hope Steve Sarkeesian and everything uh, works out well for you, uh, buddy. But uh, can't thank you enough for coming on, and uh, enjoy your holiday season. No, thanks for having me, and uh, go Chiefs. Oh, definitely. Thanks. Take care, Larry. All right. Bye-bye. Big thanks to Larry Parker for joining us, talking all things Chiefs and USC football-related. And I'll tell you what, three straight losses for the Kansas City Chiefs. And 
you know, Noah and I, we both have predicted this. We both said this football team at 9-0, and this is not that good of a team. They've had some luck to get here. And now after three straight losses, man, this does, this looks kind of this looks pretty dire. It does, but uh, I think we should start getting healthy. Uh, definitely against Washington, they're a mess. Uh, RG3 is having trouble throwing the ball. He's thrown it uh, off target, and uh, Pierre Garçon is starting to show a little bit of a temper uh, when RG3 is off and kicking the ball into the stands last week, getting a 15 yard penalty after RG3 missed uh, wide open Pierre Garçon in the end zone. And uh, their running game is pretty strong with Alfred Morris, but they kind of get away from that. They get down and they let RG3 uh, launch the ball around, and uh, it hasn't gone well. Their defense isn't as good as it was last year. A lot of old players, D'Angelo Hall and uh, London Fletcher are really old. And uh, you've got Arakpo and Ryan Kerrigan on the outside, outside linebacker. He's got to watch out for them. But uh, And Brandon Merriweather at safety, you got to watch out for your head. Uh, he likes to take a lot of those helmet-to-helmet -to -helmet shots, so... Watch out for yourself there, but it should be an easy win. Well, I don't know if there is such a thing as an easy win for these Kansas City Chiefs. We saw them, you know, win close games to get to 9-0. and You saw them make big defensive plays. And in the last three games, you know, specifically Denver, who twice has now just has taken it to Kansas City, and, and, and the pass rush has been an, an issue. The Chiefs are not getting to, did not get to Peyton Manning at all um, through those two games. Uh, the offense, though, showing signs of life is that – what's going to have to offset this dip in defensive production. I'll tell you what, this defense went from elite to pretty good to good to abysmal to me. Well, I think you're going to see uh, probably it go back to good, uh, especially against RG3. He's no Phillip Rivers. He's no Peyton Manning. He's not going to be able to uh, take as much advantage of our secondary like uh, those two quarterbacks did. So uh, I see us getting back on track, winning this game, and uh, especially with the Redskins who are mathematically – eliminated from the playoffs you always wonder uh, what the team psyche is after that if they give up or uh, they still play for pride no i'm with you I, I think that kansas city wins this game and uh you know maybe gets back to i, I think the division's over i mean the division's over yeah i mean it's, uh you got the broncos who played the five and seven titans five and seven chargers uh the four houston and eight raiders four and eight raiders and the two and ten uh, houston texans so uh, they should win out easily and you know for kansas city it's gonna be a wild wild card spot and that's what it's gonna be and i think that you know they're going to have a 50-50 chance to win a winner win a road game in the AFC playoffs. That's kind of where they're at right now. We'll see if they can get Justin Houston back, uh, keep this offensive rhythm going. I think Alex Smith has had a pretty good couple games. Uh, receiving core really struggling in the second half against Denver, and Peyton Manning just once again an unbelievable game. 400 yards passing, you know four touchdown passes to to Eric Decker. Just an unbelievable performance, and Kansas City just did not look like they belong on the same field with Peyton Manning, and they never have. No, they haven't, and I mean, especially with that first interception thrown by Alex Smith, it just looked horrible. You had Anthony Fasano coming open uh, really early in the play, and Alex Smith held the ball, held the ball, held the ball, then threw it, and uh, was picked off by Wesley Woodyard in the end zone, and uh, I couldn't believe he threw it at that time. He was open 10 seconds before that. Well, what about the rest of the NFL? I mean, we've seen Seattle was able to defend their home field. Got the sound record back as they defeated the New Orleans Saints. I mean, definitively, is that the best team in football right now? Yeah, I think it is right now. Uh, it goes week to week. I mean, you can't put too much stock into this saying people are saying, oh, they're just going to run right through the playoffs and get to a Super Bowl. I mean, that's most likely. Uh, they're hard to beat at home, but uh, you can't definitively say that. Uh, th they've got some holes. Uh, they're missing Brandon Brown or Walter Thurman. They're number two and three corners, so... Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how they go uh, forward, especially playing San Francisco this week. A uh, very good San Francisco 49ers team in San Francisco, so it'll be interesting to see how they play on the road. And then we've got uh, Carolina going in the Dome to New Orleans, see if New Orleans can bounce back against a very tough defense and Cam Newton. You always love uh, Drew Brees and, and, and uh, the Saints offense at home. I'll tell you what, at the Superdome, it's going to be an interesting weekend of the NFL too, and we've been covering all things SEC championship related. We're in it here in Atlanta. We thank you so much for joining us here on The Hog. I hope you have a wonderful uh, football weekend with your families. I know it's kind of it's kind of a post-Thanksgiving lull, if you will, but Christmas is coming up. We've got some big football games. Sit down and enjoy them, guys. We appreciate you joining us. Clint Schweitzer, Noah Groninger, joining you as always. Have a great weekend. Big time football on the horizon. Get your cameras ready. M-I-Z. Say the name.